Hello, I welcome you all in this course on refrigeration and air conditioning. Today we will take up the psychometric processes in an air conditioning system or on a psychometric chart moving from one state to another state is known as psychometric process. So, in a psychometric chart if you are moving from one state to another state it is known as psychometric process. <laughs> During the process, we cannot randomly find any path or we cannot go for a shortest path like this. Suppose I have to move from state 1 to state 2. I cannot take the shortest path. I cannot take the shortest path. There are certain restricted paths <coughs> uh, which we can adopt during the process or for attaining state 2 from state 1 and these paths or processes are known as psychometric processes. We will discuss these processes one by one and it is better if we use the psychometric chart for this purpose. Now, let us start with the sensible heating. Now, what is sensible heating? As I have stated earlier, the sensible heating is the process of heat addition when there is no fluid change, no phase change of the fluid and the temperature of the fruit rises. So, if I want to add heat to the uh, air, then the, the moment the heat is added to the air, the temperature of air will rise and temperature means here the dry bulb temperature. The dry bulb temperature of air will rise and sensible heat is expressed as C p delta t or C p t 2 minus t 1. Now, here because we have mixture of water and air, so at the same time when we are heating the moist air, the dry air and the water uh, vapor, they will get heated simultaneously. So, directly we cannot use this system. Analytically also we can find how much heat is added to the system or to the air. But on a psychometric chart, suppose I say the temperature of air rises from 20 degree centigrade to 25 or 30 degree centigrade and heat is added to the air. So, first of all 20 degree centigrade with certain relative humidity, the air is available and sensible heat is added to the air. So, sensible heat is added, so there is no change in specific humidity or humidity ratio of the air. So, we will follow the horizontal line. This is state 1 and then we will get state 2 somewhere here. Uh, this is uh, dBT 1, this is dBT 2. Suppose it is from 20 degree centigrade to 30 degree centigrade. Now, you can see here that uh, specific humidity or humidity ratio has remained constant in this process heating process, but the relative humidity has reduced. When, when we, we are moving in this direction, the relative humidity gets reduced. So, in this case also in sensible heating, the relative humidity got reduced, I will draw it again. So, this is state 1, this is state 2, relative humidity at state 1 and the relative humidity at state 2. So, relative humidity gets reduced. Reverse 2 is, is sensible cooling, when we are moving from state 2 to state 1, in that case the relative humidity is increasing, but specific humidity is remaining constant. Specific humidity is remaining constant. Now, these processes I like to depict on the psychometric chart. 20 degree centigrade, the air is suppose is available at 50 percent relative humidity. So, we can place the location here, this is the state 1 and then there is sensible heating. Sensible heating means specific this specific humidity or humidity ratio is remaining constant and temperature is increased to 30 degree centigrade. 
when the temperature is increased to 30 degree centigrade the relative humidity has reduced from 50 percent to around 28 percent air has become dry so sensible heat makes the air dry that is why you must have observed when we run a heater in uh, uh, winter during winters when the heaters are used the air in the room become dry and it is always advisable when we are using uh, 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 heat pump or a reverse uh, a, a air conditioning system or a air conditioning system working on the reverse cycle and it is used as a heat pump in that case it is always advisable to keep some wet cloth on the room so that relative humidity does not reduce drastically suppose in the winters now let us take case of the winters when the temperature is air is available at uh, uh, temperature let us say 10 degree centigrade and relative humidity is 70 percent here 10 degree centigrade 70 percent and if I heat this air with the help of heat or sensible heating of this air if I do the sensible heating of this air up to let us say 30 or 35 degree centigrade or let us say 30 degree centigrade the humidity will reduce to 20 percent air will become very dry to so 20 percent humidity is quite low humidity and that may cause a state of discomfort also in the room so it is always advisable that when you are using uh, heat pump or heating system then have some wet cloth <coughs> in the room so that the humidity is maintained same is the sensible cooling sensible cooling is the reverse direction suppose air is available suppose nowadays in during the summer season air is available at 40 degree centigrade and humidity may be around uh, let us say 30 percent so 40 degree centigrade ambient air 30 degree 30 percent relative humidity if i do sensible cooling of this air up to 25 degree centigrade then humidity will be around 70 percent I may attain temperature of 25 degree centigrade, but humidity will be on slightly higher side and if I further cool it to 20 degree centigrade, the humidity sorry, sorry the 20 if the temperature is suppose here at the inlet the temperature is 40 percent, humidity is 40 percent. If I cool this air from 40 percent and 40 percent relative humidity and 40 degree centigrade temperature, then at 25 degree centigrade the humidity may be around 90 percent. So, if in summer season outside air which is available at 40 degree centigrade temperature RH is 40 percent that is very normal. If I do sensible cooling then relative humidity will be 90 percent. So, relative humidity has to be controlled in this process. So, there are certain other processes where we can control the relative humidity. I will discuss those processes uh, later on that is cooling with dehumidification in a system uh, on a psychometric chart we are heating from state 1 to state 2. Now, how the heating will be done? Heating will be done we will put a heater or heating coil and air will be blown over this heating coil. Now, heating coil temperature is T 2. One to two. Heating coil temperature is T two. Air which is blowing over the heating coil is T one. Do you think the air emerging from the heating coil will be also at T two? It is not possible, or it is very difficult to attain such a situation. The air which is coming emerging from heating coil will be at a lower temperature T three. I am repeating there is a heating coil which is maintained at temperature 2, air which is available at T 1 at temperature 1 T 1 when the air is blown over the heating coil in ideal case it is assumed when it is blown over the heating coil the air will take the temperature T 2, but actually it does not happen. In actual practice another temperature T 3 is attained which is lower than T 2. And this is this 
the temperature difference is this temperature difference results in the bypass vector. We say that why it is called bypass vector? We say that part of the air has attained temperature T 2 and part of the air is bypassing the coil. So, if the air is going in this direction at T 1, this is at T 2. So, some fraction of air is getting bypassed, bypassed and it is bypassed and it is at T 1 and the air which is blown over this coil attaining temperature T 2. Now, if we do the energy balance in this uh, system, then I will rub it off. So, C p T 1 uh, multiplied by B plus C p T 2 multiplied by 1 minus B is equal to T 3, C p T 3. C p T 3. So, here I am repeating there is a coil air at a temperature T 1 is blown over the coil, coil temperature is T 2 and the air emerging out of the coil is at temperature T 3. It is assumed that the part of the air that is B is bypassed and mixed with the air which is emerging from the coil remaining part of the air in the coil and now we have done the energy balance. If you solve this energy balance then you will find that bypass factor is T 2 minus T 3 divided by T 2 minus T 1, because here this C p C p C p will be cancelled T 1 b plus T 2 1 minus b is equal to T 3 T 1 B minus T 2 B is equal to T 3 minus T 2 or B uh, T 2 minus T 1 is equal to T 2 minus T 3. On psychometric chart, we have shown that This is state 1, state 2 and this is state 3. So, bypass factor is T 2 minus T 3 divided by T 2 minus T 1. It means that is the ideal difference between ideal temperature and actual temperature at the exit of the coil and this is the maximum possible temperature rise in the air this ratio will give the bypass factor. Closer the point 3 to 2, less is the bypass factor. Normally, when we design the coil, bypass factor less than 0 0.1 is always considered or it is appreciated. So, <laughs> this is bypass factor. Now, we will come to the cooling with dehumidification. Now, cooling with dehumidification, I have taken earlier also, I have taken one example, where the outside temperature is 40 degree centigrade and relative humidity is 40 percent or let us say it is uh, 50 percent. So, we will take outside air temperature that is very typical of uh, uh, north Indian temperature, outside temperature is 40 degree centigrade dBT and 50 percent relative humidity. Now, this state can be shown on the psychometric chart here. 50 percent relative humidity, this is state 1. Now, <laughs> I want to have, I mean my room temperature as 24 degree centigrade. Now, this has to be reduced to let us say 24 degree centigrade dBT and let us say 50 percent RH. But what happens when I do sensible cooling? when I do the sensible cooling, in that case, this is sensible cooling. So, when the sensible cooling is done, when the sensible cooling is done, the 
temperature is reduced to 5, 6, 7, 8, 20, 7.5 degree centigrade and air is 100 percent saturated. I do not get 24 degree centigrade. It means the air available at 40 degree centigrade and 50 percent RH, if I do sensible cooling, I cannot attain 24 degree centigrade temperature. Now, in order to attain 24 degree centigrade temperature, I will have to come to this line and dehumidification has to be done. I cannot maintain constant humidity ratio. So, dehumidification has to be done. So, when the 100 percent saturation is attained, 100 percent saturation means relative humidity is 100 percent is equal to P V by P V S and P V is equal to P V S. It means the partial pressure of the vapor at this state when it is 100 percent is 7.385 kilo Pascal. So, partial pressure of the vapor at 40 degree centigrade is 7.385 kilo Pascal. Further cooling will reduce the temperature and vapor will remain saturated. It means suppose 42 we cool it up to 30 or uh, 25 degree, 25 degree right. So, when 40 to 25 or here in this case we can go up to let us say 26, if we cool from 40 to 26, 40 degree centigrade to 26 degree centigrade, the partial pressure at 26 degree centigrade is uh, 3.364, 3.364. Now, this is 26 degree, then partial pressure is 3.364. So, partial pressure of vapor has reduced. It means, <laughs> it means the sum of the vapor has been removed from the air and that is visible from here also. The moment we come to uh, 26 degree, it is here 26, 26 degree, 26 degree, right. <laughs> the, the specific humidity has reduced, gram of water vapor per kg of dry air has reduced. It means water has precipitated from air. Now, we want to have 24 degree centigrade, so we will cool it up to 24. But when we cool it up to 24, the RH is not attained. We need RH uh, 50 percent. Here RH is 100 percent and we cannot move in a vertical direction. In the psychometric chart, you can move in a horizontal direction, but movement of the vertical direction, all of a sudden you cannot draw all the, I mean certain amount of water from the vapor without realizing any process. So, what we can do, we can further cool it. So, air can be further cooled up to this point that is uh, 30 degree centigrade. So, air can be further cooled up to 13 degree centigrade and in this process, in this process the, uh, the partial pressure of the vapor will keep on reducing, it will come close to the 1.5 uh, kilo Pascal. After attaining this 13 degree centigrade, here the vapor is again heated. So, this is known as reheating of air and the only then we can get this state of 24 degree centigrade dry bulb temperature and 50 percent RH. Now, I am repeating, if outside air is available at 40 degree centigrade dry bulb temperature and 50 percent relative humidity. Maintaining the same relative humidity, if I want to reduce the temperature up to 24 degree centigrade, I cannot simply come from this point to this point. For this purpose, first of all sensible cooling has to be done till the uh, air gets saturated. Once the air gets saturated with water, then when we further cool the air, the water will start precipitating because here 
the amount of water in air is constant during uh, the sensible cooling. But the moment dehumidification takes place, the water gets uh, starts getting precipitated and it is cooled not only up to 25 degrees, because if we cool up to 25 degrees centigrade, we will be getting air which is 100 percent saturated, but we need air at 50 percent saturation or relative humidity. So, <coughs> further cooling is required up to 13 degrees centigrade and then heating will be done. So, the process, the arrangement will be something like that something like this which may sound very strange that initially there is a cooling coil air is blown cooling coil is at a temperature of if there is no bypass factor then it is a temperature of approximately uh, 26 26 and a half degree centigrade this is 26 and a half degree centigrade this i have taken from here then not 25, not 25, this is 25, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 27.5, not 25, 26, 27, 27.5, not 26, 27.5 degree centigrade. Okay. And then <coughs> further cooling is taking place here on the coil. So, coil temperature is not 27.5, it is maintained at 13 degree centigrade. So, the air is blown over a coil which is maintaining at 30 degree centigrade and then this air which is emerging from this coil is heated up to 24 degree centigrade and that is how the vapor at <coughs> this state of 50 percent relative humidity is attained. Now, practically what we do we simply join this, this is a, this is a imaginary process line and sometimes for the sake of convenience of the calculations, these two lines, these two points are joined. These two points are joined together. You must have seen the desert coolers or simple coolers in the market. So, coolers have a, an exhaust fan in the middle surrounded by the wet pads and when this exhaust fan sucks air from these wet pads, then air gets cooled and it is humidified. <coughs> and sometimes <coughs> it is humidified to the extent then you feel very uncomfortable in such an environment. So, this process is followed at constant wet bulb temperature line. Suppose, <coughs> outside temperature is 40 degree centigrade or 35 degree centigrade and uh, relative humidity 40 degree centigrade uh, and uh, relative uh, uh, 40 degree centigrade, let us say 40 degree centigrade and relative humidity is 10 percent or outside environment is 35 uh, degree centigrade and relative humidity is 20 percent. Now, in this case when the temperature is 35 degree centigrade relative humidity is uh, 20 percent, cooling with adiabatic humidification line will follow this wet bulb temperature line and it can go up to 100 percent saturation. So, is the case with the 40 percent, this will also follow this line. right? <coughs> and when the efficiency of the system is 100 percent, you will be getting this temperature at 100 percent humidification. Now, effectiveness of this is measured by suppose this is temperature T1, this in this process adiabatic humidification process, this is temperature T1, this is temperature T2. So, 100 percent efficiency is you get 100 percent of this. Suppose evaporator is 90 percent efficient, you will be getting or 80 percent efficient, you will be getting temperature T3 here or temperature may be somewhere here. So, this process is very useful in the climate where the relative humidity is low and temperature is high for example, desert climate. Another is chemical dehumidifications. Now, chemicals are also used to absorb uh, vapor, vapor from uh, uh, the air like silica gel. <coughs> During this process chemical dehumidification process, that there is a reverse of this process. If you do the chemical dehumidification, 
the process will be reverse this process. So, this is causes this causes dehumidification and heating, heating of the air <laughs> and because the vapor present in the air is transformed into the liquid form and latent heat of uh, the, the vapor is added to the enthalpy of air and that is why there is a rise in temperature. So, for this dehumidification process it is reverse of the humidification there is rise in dry bulb temperature. Steam jet injection. <laughs> now, steam can also be used for humidification of air. Suppose I want to increase humidity at a particular temperature, let us say a temperature of 25 degree centigrade. If I want suppose 25 degree centigrade and 50 percent relative humidity, a state is here. I want to further improve the humidity up to 70 percent or 80 percent. I can inject steam available at 25 degree centigrade into the system or steam at higher temperature can also be injected in that case the temperature of air will slightly increase, but steam is a very good medium of increasing <coughs> humidity of air without uh, 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 increasing humidity of air with very low temperature rise of the air. So, these are certain processes we have discussed these are elementary processes in an air conditioning system. Some more processes are to be discussed in the coming lecture. This is all for today. Thank you.